I'd like to tell a personal story today. And to preface, I just want to acknowledge that there are many in the world that have been through far worse than me. But I'm hoping this story resonates with you on some sort of level. When I was 28, having been a PDHPE teacher for six years, I decided to study a full-time theological degree. And I'd also just entered into a new relationship that looked quite promising, which is always exciting. Life was good. A few months into full-time study though, due to sitting down so much, I noticed my back began to hurt. Now, lower back pain is pretty normal for many people, and I'm used to it as I fractured a vertebrae when I was 15. But this time, it just didn't go away. It began by not being able to sit for long periods of time. I couldn't relax when leaning forward. In the mornings, I'd wake up frozen, and it'd take me about 10 minutes just to stand up. Pain would shoot down my leg. If I dropped a pen on the ground, I just left it because I couldn't pick it up. And brushing my teeth and leaning over the sink to spit out the toothpaste, no longer possible. Over time, standing up became a problem. My back would just seize. And if I lay down too long, the same thing would happen. So I couldn't sit, stand or lie down. And you can do the math there, there was no relief. I'd lie down in the back of a lecture hall with a pillow and a notebook, trying to make sure that my pen didn't run out. Chronic pain does something to your mood. It began to take a toll on the relationship I was in. I was depressed. I was really hard work, actually. And I was so consumed with my own pain, I rarely thought about her or others. I'm not proud of that. Over the year, I spent my money on physios, chiros, acupuncture, back specialists, and the pain only got worse, and they didn't have any answers. I ended up getting scans, and the last MRI revealed I had two bulging discs and two degenerated discs. And I asked the expensive back specialist, hey, how long will this take to heal? And he said, they never will. In fact, he said it would only get worse with age. Now, as a previously active 28-year-old, time froze. I was in eight out of 10 pain. The cosmos stopped for a second. Pain like this forever? To be honest, the physical pain wasn't actually the worst part. And like so many who are injured or sick, in that moment, the real pain comes in the form of not being able to do the things you love. You know, those things that give you joy or the things you feel you're just built to do. And I thought, no more surfing, running, tennis, golf, rugby, climbing, dirt bike riding. Was I doomed to be a spectator in God's creation instead of participating in it? And in moments like that, it was the death of a dream. To top it off, my relationship ended. And I thought, if this pain continues like this, my mood will stay low. I'll be hard to be around. And the chance of being in a secure and healthy relationship, slim to none. Another dream died. I know many who have had their dreams shattered. And perhaps that's you. It's the couple who are told they can't have children. It's the bad news the doctor gives. It's the relationship that fails the job that didn't come through. The life you thought you'd live won't be the life you'll have. When I got the news about my back and my relationship fell apart, the following weeks became very dark. I couldn't see how things would get better. There was no light. And I now understood how people give up in life. But then I got a call from a friend's back specialist and he told me to come in. And he said he had something that may work. I told him, I've had enough, we've tried, that's it. But he replied, no, there's a physio that specializes in switching on the pelvic floor muscle. This is an awkward muscle, which is part of your deep core that could take all the stress off your back. He said, you'll never be pain free. But the pain could be two out of 10 instead of eight out of 10. It'll take time, he said, at least a year. But he sounded quite confident and said there was about a 70% success rate in cases similar to mine. When he told me this, a fragment of light appeared in the darkness. It was only a fragment, a glimmer of hope. But I went to this physio. He was expensive, I did not care. And slowly, very slowly, over the next two years, the pain levels dropped in everyday movements. I returned to surfing and other exercises. The light crept in, hope swept in and gradually push back the dark. I used to think that hope was a flimsy word. I don't think that now. 
Hope is the light that pushes back the darkness. And in a world that can be so dark, and in the times of our lives where darkness seems to rule, hope drives us forward. You don't realise how important hope is, how valuable just a little bit of light is until you understand the dark. For millennia, Christians have spoken of the hope they have. An eternity with God, a new body, an end to suffering, the knowledge that God will make all things right. But is this hope just a wish? Does this hope mean, gee, I want this to be true, but I'm not sure it is? No, the hope Christians have is not a blind wish. It's based on something. And going back to my story, when the light finally pierced the dark for me, it wasn't based on nothing. It was based on the news the back specialist gave me. It was based on his expertise and the evidence of successful cases. And even though the pain was there and would be for some time, I had hope that life would slowly get better, even though I couldn't see it. For the Christian, our hope is based on something too. It is based on the real resurrection of Jesus. And this is an event in history we can test and verify. I've spent many years testing it, questioning it. I'll invite you to investigate it too. And in the end, I came to the conclusion that Jesus really did rise from the dead. And if he did, that proves who he says he is. And I can trust what he says. This is why Easter is such a big deal. It celebrates the hope we have is based on something. On the third day, when the light of dawn bursts forth, the tomb is empty. Jesus is the light of the world. He is our hope that God is present, that He loves, He provides. We can be with Him. We can be called His children, that this life is not the end. Death has lost its sting, that we can experience a real resurrection with Him one day. If we can grasp onto this hope, life can be a little less dark. We can find a strength to press on and even pass this light of darkness.